This is Karen Warren from One on One Physical Therapy, and I'm here today to talk to you about reducing the risk of an ACL injury. We're going to discuss why these injuries occur and what can be done about it. So let's talk about the ACL rates. Eight to one, male to female. More likely to happen in females than males. The two highest sports, soccer and basketball. 30%. 30% of these athletes never make it back. 30% of these athletes redo the same side or tear the opposite side. The physical, emotional, and psychological damage and trauma to these athletes is astronomical and we need to reduce the risk. So let's talk about why these things occur. We have intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic are built in and we cannot change them. Just a few of the many intrinsic factors would be ligament size. It is smaller in the female than the male. The notch size. The notch is smaller for the ACL in the female athlete versus the male, making it more likely to become impinged and tear. The Q angle, the angle between the hips and the knees is a lot wider in the female, putting more stress on the knee and the ACL ligament. And quad dominance. Quad dominance, I have it here for intrinsic, but it is something we can definitely affect along with our ex extrinsic factors. So extrinsic, let's talk about this. These are the things that we can control. These are the things that I'm gonna teach you how to control today. Movement literacy, that's a great way for saying coordination, motor control, how well an athlete moves. And this is gonna be addressed when we talk about our athlete's pyramid. Strength, this is something that we can develop early in our athletes and build on as they go once we have a movement literacy base and a good foundation. Endurance, we need to make sure these athletes have endurance. We know that most injuries occur in the second half of the game, the fourth quarter, the end of the practice, the end of the tournament. So we need to make sure our athletes have endurance and along with that, the energy to keep going. Now, landing mechanics is a big one that we will address when we go to our pyramid, but this is something we can definitely, definitely change and start at a very early age. So let's take a look at why the injury rates are the way they are. To understand that, we have to look at our movement pyramid. The base of the pyramid is movement proficiency. That is coordinated movements, good clean movements, basic control of the body. Once that's established, we can then improve the energy systems and develop some endurance, some endurance in the movement patterns. Once we have the first two levels of our pyramid built, we can then develop speed and strength. We can use interventions that work on speed and strength with our athletes only with a good foundation. Lastly, we can then work on skill. So let's go over a few rules of the pyramid. Rule number one, be present. Make sure your athletes are present. Phones down, distractions away. Research shows that movement proficiency will increase if your athletes are present. Also, being present enhances their ability to focus when they're fatigued. And remember, injuries occur more likely when athletes are fatigued. Positive self-talk, choose your words wisely. The fewer the cues you can give your athletes, the better. Positive reinforcement goes a long way. Meet them where they are. Please do not have an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old do a push-up. Unless it is a perfect military push-up, all you're gonna be doing is hard wiring poor movements and you're gonna be cracking the foundation of your pyramid. If you are not well versed in regressions of adult exercises, reach out to someone in your community who is trained in this and get some help, get some guidelines. Okay, quality over quantity. Again, pay attention to when your athlete's fatigued. When you see the quality of their movements decline, stop. Again, that's also meeting them where they are at that moment in time. And then lastly, always, always revisit the foundation. So let's talk about what's really happening. And this leads to why injury rates are the way they are. Because in practice, what do we do? 
we focus on skill. In private training, what do we do? We focus on skill. We need to take these two things and start at the bottom of our pyramid, movement proficiency. We can do this also with our game warm-up. This is really important. So you have all your practices and your game warm-up to really, really build this. These things will come. Warm up the nervous system, which is what you're doing in your warm-ups. You're making good muscle memory. The warm-ups must be dynamic. Dynamic, which means fluid movement. No static stretching. This turns muscles off. Okay? And then you can give your athletes a home program that addresses their individual needs, where you see them struggling. And finally, we're going to talk about recovery. Okay? Without recovery, we are not going to have energy. Okay? We need recovery to have adequate energy. And that's in the base of our pyramid. So recovery is this invisible thing that happens when you sleep, have adequate nutrition, calories, and quality of food, quality of those calories, hydration, including electrolytes that you lose when you sweat, and then recovery tools may include foam rolling, Epsom salt baths, cryotherapy, whatever you can do to help your body recover. So for more, to learn about how we improve movement proficiency, how we make this dynamic warm up and everything that we do very, very effective, see my next video on dynamic warm up and strengthening.